My allergies are really bad today, but we need to talk about this because no one else is. And I'm really not sure why, y'all. Like, this is one of those things that Twitter should have absolutely lit up about. Like, there should have been lots of people very, very angry and there just wasn't. I'm not entirely sure if I'm just missing something here or if there's a specific reason that lots of other streamers are not talking about this article, but we're gonna get into it because it needs to be talked about, frankly. It's very important. So there was an article that came out on gamesindustry.biz, which is a website that talks a lot about the games industry. I've never heard of this before. Comment below and tell me if you actually know about this site and whether or not it's trustworthy. Maybe that's why people aren't talking about this. But this article was Twitch staff and ex-staff calling the company out on racism, homophobia, misogyny, harassment, plenty of other just disgusting stories, quite frankly. I want to give a major shout out to Brendan Sinclair who actually wrote this article because this thing is massive. It is not a short read, y'all. It could take you 30 to 45 minutes to get through everything. It is huge and it probably took a ton of time for him to write and research everything that went into this. So Brendan, you are a true homie. Thank you for compiling all this information for us. For those of you who don't have 30 to 45 minutes to spend reading reading this actual article, what you need to know is that whenever the Me Too movement was happening for the Twitch community this past summer, that an ex-Twitch staff employee actually came forward to gamesindustry.biz and wanted to open up about all of the harassment and exploitation that she had experienced while working for the company. And so they decided to dig a little bit deeper and they found a lot of staff and ex-employees that wanted to talk about their experiences working for Twitch and they were not good experiences at all. The original woman who approached gamesindustry.biz to talk about this said that the harassment was so bad that it was unavoidable and it was actually part of the culture. So it was normal for you to be sitting at your desk and see someone talking very disgustingly about women or POCs or LGBTQ, who knows, right? Like we don't know all of the stories and all of the situations that this stuff occurred within and we don't know the context of it either. But we do know that there are 16 people who came forward for this article to talk about their experiences. One of the women who came forward said that Twitch felt like a boys club, which if you have heard this term at all, you know it usually refers to the fact that men are just taken more seriously and women are kind of like objectified a little bit or they're treated as if their opinions don't matter or like they are just too emotional to be able to get the job done. And this isn't abnormal, honestly, for games industry jobs or jobs within tech or even jobs within Silicon Valley. This kind of stuff happens all the time. It is a very male and masculine dominated industry, but should it be? Like, should we allow this behavior? Now, in this article, they did come out and say that since Amazon acquired Twitch, that professionalism at the company has increased a lot, but it doesn't necessarily mean that all the problems are solved, right? Like, there's still tons of issues, there's still tons of people who are coming out about harassment and exploitation and everything that they experienced before. There's just a little bit more structure to it. So, Big yikes, Twitch. I'll be honest with you, I saw this article and I thought everyone was going to be talking about it because Twitch, your culture is going to impact the culture of your entire platform. The way the platform operates is going to be a result of how you operate your business. And yet nobody is really talking about that. No one's really like giving an opinion on this or or sharing it with their audiences what is up with this i think i saw one big streamer talking about this and that was casey tron who was specifically mentioned in the article as someone who twitch wanted to try to get rid of because she was a booby streamer and all she did was show her cleavage to grow which if you know casey tron is not freaking true at all. I started watching Casey Tron when I first joined Twitch. I wanna say this was like six or seven years ago I first started watching her. At the time, whenever I first saw her, I thought that that was a terrible representation for women gamers. I thought that she was gross and that she was doing like really bad things and she was using the, the assets that she had been given in order to grow her stream. But it doesn't take long for literally anyone to watch Casey and to realize that it is satire, like she is trolling 
everybody constantly. The fact that she can take this nasty, disgusting culture that objectifies her and turn it into content for herself is something that tons of male streamers do constantly with their own outrage. That deserves a freaking commendation, honestly. Like, she's getting hate and death threats constantly because she dares to have breasts, I guess, and now she is going to receive all of this negativity for it, so much so that the platform and the people who work at the platform platform want to try and kick her off of it. People hated Casey Tron six or seven years ago. It's no freaking wonder that Twitch wanted to get rid of her too. Like nobody understood this. Nobody was freaking woke about breasts on Twitch. Nobody was trying to empower women at that time on Twitch. No one gave a shit. But yeah, she was the only freaking person who really said anything. Like, Really? See, this article highlights a massive problem that Twitch has, like absolutely massive, y'all. The problem is that a platform cannot be inclusive of lots of different types of people if the company culture isn't inclusive of lots of different types of people, right? Like, how can we expect that a place that is only employing white dudes is going to build a platform where everyone is treated equally. That's just not gonna happen because they can't pull from the experiences that other people are giving in order to affect the change and, and improve the platform as it should be. But here's the thing, I know I called out white guys specifically. I don't want y'all to think that that means that you are complicit or problematic just because you are a freaking white dude, right? Like, it's not true. I want everyone to be successful, including y'all white dudes. What's up? But I want other people to be successful too. And it's really important that the culture of Twitch encourages the success for everyone. White guys, black women, Asian dudes, like, who who cares? Let's let people be successful regardless of who they are or how they present themselves to be. But we have to admit, right, like no one at Twitch, no one working at Twitch is saying, hey, white guys, stop showing everybody your pale skin, like shame on you, that's disgusting, cover it up. The fact that there is sexism, racism, homophobia, etc. that is actively pushing down all of these other people, and this is happening within the culture of the work environment at Twitch, is really terrible for all of those other people who deserve to be successful just like everybody else. And this is a huge problem because success is not a finite resource. Plenty of people can be successful, and one person's success does not take success away from another. This means to me that just because white men are successful doesn't mean that everybody else can't be successful too. And if everybody else suddenly got super successful and white men had everything ripped away from them, that wouldn't be right either, because there is more than enough to go around. There is success and and bits and subs and tips and viewers and everything for everyone else. Because when we are all brought up to the level of creating such awesome content that we're able to compete among each other, regardless of the color of our skin, regardless of our gender or sex, etc., then we create better content that invites more viewers into the platform that grows live streaming as a whole because right now live streaming is barely even competitive at all with something that's produced video like YouTube. And that's why people should care about this. You, streamer, hello, give a shit about what Twitch is doing with their company. Our competitors aren't other streamers. Our competitors are people on YouTube or literally any other entertainment media. We don't have to have all this infighting. We don't have to tell other groups that they're not allowed the success that we have had as a group for a long, long, long time. We're allowed to have everyone be successful, create stuff that's so great that we steal the freaking viewers from everybody else. And that's what we want. And that's the culture that Twitch should be creating within their work environment so that that culture 
culture bleeds into Twitch as a platform. I created an Instagram post and a podcast that go a little bit more in depth about this if you want to go check those out too. I really don't understand why it is so difficult for some people to just let people do their own thing. Booby streamers are not hurting anybody. They're not taking your freaking viewers. And white dudes creating spaces specifically for guys and growing their streams super huge because one of the largest demographics on Twitch is the 18 to 24 year old male shouldn't surprise us, right? Like that should still be allowed just like everybody else's groups should still be allowed. Not every space is for everyone. But if we're actively trying to tell other people who should or shouldn't be allowed, whether that's while you're working at Twitch or while you're just running your business on the platform or even as a hobby streamer, you are wasting your freaking time. You are spending time on the wrong thing because your attention is finite. When you focus your attention on what everybody else is doing and whether or not it aligns with your own morals, that is attention that you are actively taking away from your community and your stream. And when you do that, you are not performing your best or creating your best content. So ultimately, yes, booby streamers are taking your viewers, but it's your fault. And obviously, substitute booby streamers for literally any person that you think is affecting your ability to get more viewers for yourself. I don't know about y'all, some of you are going to continue worrying about other people constantly. You're constantly going to feel like you have to give an opinion on whether or not someone's morals are great and whether or not they're living their life the right way according to your standards. I'm going to be over here being very productive and growing my business and growing my content and focusing on the things that matter to me and in my life as opposed to trying to control other people which I know I have zero say in the way that they run want to run their own shit. So you waste your time or you don't. Which option are you going to take? Now there is a ray of hope in this article though. Twitch did say that apparently some of these allegations are old and they have changed a lot of stuff within their company culture so hopefully that is true and that's the case i love to give the benefit of the doubt so i'm just going to assume that they are doing their best in order to make sure that their culture is improved so that improves the experience that all of their uh, customers i guess have on their platform and that is the perception that i would like to have of twitch going forward as opposed to reading this article and letting it turn me into someone who is super jaded who says that spending time on Twitch or being a streamer on their platform is a complete waste of time now, which I, I don't think that that's true. However, Twitch asked us to hold them accountable and we definitely should. So moving forward, these are the types of things that we need to be paying attention to. And if ex Twitch staff come out and say, hey, I had this really horrible experience working for this platform, we should probably believe them. All right, I don't feel good today, so I'm not gonna do any more talking. Go and watch this video. YouTube thinks that you're gonna like it. I'll see you in that one, bye.